All right. All right. Well, hey, 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 welcome back. This is Scott. So we're working through a bunch of things that I've been asked about over uh, the last two or three months on entering the business analytics field. And so kind of marching through some of the topics that I think are important. If you want to see something specific, let me know and I'll be happy to present on that. I'm an old timer, so I've been doing this for a long time. Um, so what I was thinking about doing um, tonight was covering the uh, kind of just an intro into pricing for B2B. And it's a big area. It's very important um, in so many domains. B, B2C is kind of extension to this, B2B, business to business, B2C, business to consumer. Um, but yeah, I, I just thought I would do an intro and, and this is a very specific use case and see if there's interest. And then I can dive deeper into this field. I was a, a senior pricing scientist for a number of years. And so, uh, hopefully I have something to share on, <laughs> on, on this particular topic. So here's what I thought. I just threw together a few slides and so takeaways, um, you know, pricing for improved profit. And, um, you know, when I, when I put that bullet out there, I was thinking, well, yes, but what does that mean? And so this is close to my heart. I like to spend my time with a very specific objective, even if it's fun, right? Uh, if I want to go for a walk, if I want to do something or exercise or whatever, you should have, you should have a goal in mind for pretty much everything you do in life, whether it's personal or, or whatever, you shouldn't just wander through life. You should have some idea on what you want to do. So when we talk about improved profit, we're going to talk about um, margin. Um, we'll talk about overall profit, increased revenue. You can do all those types of things with pricing, right? So the objective, the aim, the goal, those are very important things that you should think about. And um, it's going to actually be very important. It's one of the first parts of this, this uh, overview. Um, and then we'll talk about what it looks like from a high level. I'm going to show you a diagram of the methodology and what it looks like, what kind of data you can bring in, and um, just to give you some ideas. And then normalization of price is a critical part of uh, pricing and B2B. And then optimization um, of that, um, which was is done with a decision variable DV. Um, so when we talk about that, we talk about optimization. I don't want to go too far down there, but uh, it's really kind of the domain of a lot of different fields. Certainly, calculus is part of it. Again, see a previous video I talked about. You don't know need to know about how to to do um you know derivatives and and go through the methodology but you need to know the the, the um you know the minimum maximum um the the rules in calculus that determine what an optimization point is just the what it is not necessarily the mechanics of it but but what you're trying to do in in that field and operations research and in industrial engineering those people are very much about optimizing certain things. All right, moving on. Segmentation, um, which is you can't price at a global level. You have to price at a segment level. We'll talk about that very, very briefly. And then, um, then I want to gauge your interest. Should I talk about price sensitivity, demand elasticity? That would be the next one. So we'll we'll just start here and then we'll dive down. So the first thing with any any analytics project is to understand the data, right? You have to understand the data. And the primary way to do that is through what's called EDA, Exploratory Data Analysis. And Tukey, a fundamental book, if you want to pick up a book, that's a book for you. Um, Tukey, he's, he kind of started this whole thing. Um, so understand the data and then move from there um, for pricing you're going to need to do a normalized price like i just talked about 
um, can't use the raw price. That doesn't work. We'll go through that in just a second. Um, obviously, you're going to need to define, um, I'm sorry, clean the data. Make sure that you've got, you know, you don't have holes and gaps and everything else. You're going to need to um, look at what contributes most to price differentiation or the normalized price differentiation there. So you, you need to determine the variables that are important to that. And then you're going to start to segment, right? So this could be like, you're familiar with cart or classification and regression trees, uh, any sort of tree method where you're starting at the top with all the data points, and then you start to slowly cascade and define and split the factors out. I mean, you can almost do this with, with BI, with business, uh, business intelligence um, through almost a visual dashboard, but but certainly there's algorithms that exist too to define what separates the data um, mathematically into very, what you want to do is you want to take something that, that's like this and then you want to squeeze it down. You want to squeeze the variability out of the data and 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 create tight clusters or tight segments. I hate to use the word clusters because that's kind of a different meaning for data scientists. But anyway, segments that are tightly bound um, that represent little variants uh, within, right? So this is an important factor with statistics or anything else. You, most of these methods, actually, this is a good point. Most of these methods, all of what we're trying to do is we're trying to squeeze things down where the within variation, right? I hope you can see my fingers. Within the variation is very tight and the cross variation is wide. So you start with everything all together, then you cascade down and then you keep everything tight. The variation within the segments are very tight. Across the segments are, are very loose. Uh, the variance is, is maximized between minimized within. Okay, so, and then we'll talk about th that, the segmentation process, and then in normal a project, you can look at the post-process results, um, basically testing, right? Um, build models and then test them. All right, so the optimization methodology overall, we won't go too deep into this. I like to kind of keep these things short. I'm already kind of diving down into a few things, but from left to right, okay, so if you look, we do the EDA, right? So we start out with the data analysis, Hope, hopefully you can see my pointer here, and we kind of clean the business data, we, we generate supporting data tables, we create the data infrastructure to support what we want to do, um, we we bring that, that, and what we're talking about, the data that we're talking about is um product masters order data we're talking about here we're talking about transactions from um, b2b customers uh business to business customers so at the transaction level what what are we getting different price wise and 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 the one of the things that makes this important is there's a negotiation level uh most often in b2b data um b to c we can talk about that that's a little bit a little bit different um model but then you start talking about the second stage is the business hypothesis you know what are the drivers for price sensitivity i mean um you know obviously mercedes-benz people will pay more for for mercedes-benz with tesla an Audi, um, some of the performance cars versus some of the other brands. And so what are the, is it, is it brand or is it um, geography? Is it age? I mean, different age of customers perfect, uh, in, I'm, I'm sorry, impacts their willingness to pay, et cetera. So we, we use all that within the hypothesis stage to create the segmentation. 
And then we can use algorithms to do the tree, the segmentation tree. We'll go through that very briefly. I feel like I'm, I'm going very slow here. And then we can get into kind of the demand modeling and calculating price sensitivity within each segment and optimizing what price we should offer. And at the very end, we offer this envelope of, of pricing. So that's kind of just a very high level level view. And, and if we go further, based on the, um, the feedback that I get here, we'll, we'll dive down. All right, so normalization of price. You cannot use the raw price because um, it's very generic and there's there's discounting there's all kinds of things that impact the the high level price and so what we really want to do is we want to um typically divide by something right so in the b2b space that could be some sort of a margin right so margin is the percent of profit based upon what it um it cost you to produce a product it could be a markup uh, which is basically price over cost um, so margin is, has a few things in addition to what markup has so that's the reason for the the second bullet um, or even a list multiplier a lot of a lot of products are in the b2b space have have a list price right and then or you think about even if you go to Lowe's or Home Depot or Amazon sometimes you'll have this thing called MSRP that's that's a list price as man, manufacturer the suggested retail price that's just a list price but that's not what you pay most of the time so you can use that as a ratio so these once you once you normalize this you really express the price performance across the business and time right because these things can change over time so what we're trying to do is we're trying to to perform a much more stanceable, uh, a sustainable transformation um, to that. And, and it correlates much more highly with the segmentation variables that we want to define. And uh, and basically comparability, that's the, that's the end result that we're going for here. Um, and so we, we get this, we get this thing that's actionable and it's sustainable um stable over time and we can use that uh in the future for our pricing methods right okay so then let's talk about segmentation for just a minute so why do we segment so if you look at the prices paid for um a particular uh product group at, at a very high level macro level um you just kind of squeeze in everything together right so imagine that you have 100 products and you're just pushing everything into some sort of dv uh, normalized price dv and normalized price same thing and you're you're just pushing that into one one thing but you offer 100 different products well obviously those things are going to be from low to high you're going to have different customers um you have different geographies you're gonna have different this different that so you shouldn't push all of that together so the idea of segmentation is to create more logical segments right so if i look at this i'm looking at here is the parent frequency is a but then i'm creating these sub frequencies of a and b right these two segments of a and b and that might be product that might be customer that might be geography i mean it could be a whole host of reasons for that segmentation but uh, but it, it certainly exists and so this is a diagram again of what we do with segmentation we start out with everything at the top and so the root here is the highest level of the tree and then on the left we see the the department class for a product hierarchy then we see the unit cost and then the actual skew the skew is each individual product so um so as you go down the tree you get more granular in your price 
or if you look at the customers, right? You can start at the country, right? If you're a multinational, you can look at what country you're you're performing in, and then you look at the customer type and then the spend. So these are customer segments. So you could have gold star customers or you know, customers that don't do very much business. You obviously want to you give your customers that spend a lot of money the, the, the best prices. So with a combination of these things, you can create this this kind of this final hierarchy and you look at the different price segments. And then the next thing that you're going to do is look at the elasticity within each one of the segments. Let me just say that again. So what we're going to do is we're going to create this, this hierarchy. We're going to go through, I think, one, one or two more slides. But then when we get down to the very bottom of the tree, we're going to we're going to teach uh, we're going to treat each one of these segments as a as a unique node and we'll create the price elasticity for each one of those nodes all right so just i mean a, a segmentation attribute could be pretty much anything um you know some of the most logical ones or product customer order um, order could be like, how many are you going to do? Are you going to buy one? You're going to buy a million. <laughs> so we're going to give you preferential pricing if you order a million versus whether you buy one. So that that's kind of, and there's other different order attributes, but this is like a top three that pretty much should always be considered, but there's many, many others. And it is very dependent on the use case specifically. Um, and then some, some rules of thumb, right? Good segmentation variables. What what should they be? They need to be identifiable. So they need to be available in your database, right? Um, your data warehouse, wherever the data is coming from. Actionable means that you can turn the knob. You know, you you have control over uh, the variable. Explanatory, which means that it's highly correlative to the um, decision variable, it needs to be sensible, um, you know, um, and and quite honestly, ethical um, as well, right? So you got that as well, and then substantial. Um, so it should be uh, have an impact itself, and it should be stable. So that you don't want it something to be great, explanatory last year but then it loses all of its extensibility into this year and so there's no st st stability between the two years all right so interest level i'm i'm very willing to do the next level of this which would be kind of pushing down into the price elasticity of demand um you know that would be the, the next piece of this puzzle um, and we can even dive down further based upon your comments, right? Sensitivity, willingness to pay, that kind of thing per segment. I can dive down deeper into that. And so this is, again, the series that, that I've written about. The first book is more about data literacy. And then we go through the organizational structure. But use cases is really kind of part three, right? What kind of use cases should businesses be considering? And obviously, um pricing is is a very major deal to any business i hope that was useful and so i look forward to hearing your comments and i hope to see you next time all right thanks